Hello, this is Kevin Toppenberg. I'm a family physician and my practice is in Greenville, Tennessee. I wanted to demonstrate a utility that we've written to create uh, reminder dialogues and reminder definitions for use with the VISTA EMR system. VISTA comes out of the VA. This program is developed by myself and by Eddie Haygood. We work together. This uh, demonstration is going to start with an introductory um, some introductory comments by myself and then he'll give a demonstration of actually making some dialogues. So uh, what I wanted to first talk about is what a reminder is, what a reminder um, definition in a dialogue. So a reminder definition is a logic rule that exists on the server um, that determines whether a patient is due a particular item. So for example, um, mammograms. Let's say I'm seeing Mrs. Jones and I'm reviewing her chart and I want the computer to remind me that Mrs. Jones is due for a mammogram. So how does it do that? Well there's going to be a logic rule and there's going to be a lot of factors that come in uh, to play. For example, is she the right age? Um, you know, is she in fact female? Uh, she already had her mammogram done and these are all uh, elements that are brought into uh, that, uh, that uh, decision. So those, that rule is called a reminder definition. And the traditional way has been to uh, create those in what's, con what's called the roll and scroll or the console, uh, which is a terminal program uh, to, uh, to edit the files directly on the server. Uh, we, dis, uh, we created a graphical way of, of illustrating these and editing them that we think is an improvement. Uh, this is some open source software and there's always room for further improvement if someone else would like to, uh, to make this even better. So let's, uh, let's start looking at this interface here. Before I, I talk about this, I wanted to briefly uh, talk about Venn diagrams. So probably if you remember from school, a Venn diagram is where you have a circle and where the things overlap. Uh, is where things are in common. So for example in this diagram we have things that are mammal, things that can jump, and things that can swim. So things that jump and swim could be frogs, things that are mammals and jumps could be rabbits, things that are mammals and swim could be otters, and then I added in here right in the middle it could have human beings because they uh, can do all three. And this center part here is going to be a key element uh, in our logic rules. So, so let's jump back over here. So in this simple um, Venn diagram here is a reminder we have for uh, uh, talking about whether they're using their oxygen. Uh, there's uh, coding requirements, I mean documentation requirements periodically for people that take oxygen. So this uh, first section here is uh, patients that have, are using oxygen. We have a computed finding that looks through the notes and figures out whether they are using oxygen. Uh, this would be gender. Uh, it says male or female, so in this particular case it doesn't matter, uh, either one. And then this here would be if they're of the proper age, but in this case, uh, for this diagram, it, the age doesn't matter. But every, every minder has both age and gender as something that's considered. And then if you see right here in the middle, there's a striped area that's pulsing back between yellow and red. That's kind of the consideration of the result set. And there's even a, um, a little label there that pops up says it's the result set. These things can be moved around. Um, you can click on this and it'll bring up Let's see, it jumped off the screen, so let me bring those back in. Um, so anyway, it, it'll pop up some details of that, and then you can actually even view, and it'll even bring up the actual code that defines that particular computed finding. And I apologize that those are popping up off the screen. Uh, okay, so uh, that's the reminder definition, and this is what's considered the cohort. This is all of the patients that um, are considered to be relevant for this particular finding. Then you have the resolution, which may be, for example, in our mammogram example, Mrs. Jones is considered to be relevant to um, have a mammogram, but in fact she already had it done. And so therefore we don't um, need to, to do that. So this in this resolution, if there happens to be a health factor that says in fact they're not using oxygen, or if we have a health factor that we've already documented it, then it will not show up. And so this would be, so the rule first looks about everyone who you can include in the group and then those you can exclude out of. And then when you're all done, that determines whether the, the reminder is due or not. Um, so I'm going to turn it over next to Eddie, and he's going to walk through 
doing both the reminder definition and then also the reminder dialogue. And let me just talk about reminder dialogues for a second. So the provider, when they're seeing the patient, needs a way to interact with that. So in our mammogram example, if Mrs. Jones is due for her mammogram, then it would be nice to have a dialogue that lets you do something about that. So you could say yes, you could put some notes into the into the um, to the progress note and then maybe also directly order it. Uh, and so that's all done through a, a, a graphic interface that's called a reminder dialog and that pops up when you're um, clicking on a reminder in CPRS. All right, I'm going to turn this over to him now. Thanks. This is a demonstration for creating reminder definitions and dialogues using the Astronaut Vista configuration utility. Starting in the Reminders tab, it contains two separate tabs, one for definitions and one for dialogues. We'll begin by creating a dialogue. We'll type in our name. We'll give it a display name. We can automatically select the gender of the patients that it applies to, class, sponsor, and usage. We will click and now it's created. We'll say done and done. So now it gives us just a very blank generic reminder definition. So we will go ahead and add an item. It's a standard finding. We're going to create a new one and this is going to come out of the health factor file. And so the cohort will be every time the TMG advanced care plans paper given health factor is present. We'll click create and done and done. And that adds it into the grid which looks a lot like a Venn diagram. And now we will set our resolution. And the reminder will be considered resolved when the TMG Advanced Care Plan's documented health factor exists. And now that sets it for resolution. Next, we will go to the Reminder Dialogues. And we will create a new dialog. Say done. So now this will display the dialog, which we don't we've not fleshed it out yet. So next, as we have that selected up here, we'll go to TMG demo. We'll add a child. And we'll call it TMG demo advanced care plan. So we'll say done. Next it'll give us the opportunity to change the order. We'll just have one item for this dialog. And as we click on it, the tree view shows the reminder dialog and it shows all the groups and the elements contained within. So as we click on the dialog element that I just created, we can set the dialog text and we can add TIU objects we'll set our resolution type 
we can set our finding item And so now we see that we have a test patient. The dialog will show up showing test patient has returned their advanced care plan paperwork. The clinician or the user can check that off. It'll show the health factors will be assigned exactly how it will display in CPRS. And so that's set. That's saved. Our final step is to go back to the reminder definition we created. We can go to the grid look at field number 51 link reminder dialog we can set it to TMG demo we can select the dialog and apply and now we've created a reminder definition and the re reminder dialog that will satisfy that will satisfy the reminder definition once you're done you can go back you can look at the diagrams to see how everything is set up the cohort, the resolution, had there be any utility items. You can look at the grid for everything that's contained in FileMan. Same thing with the reminder dialog. You can look at all the fields that are contained with FileMan for that particular reminder dialog. And while this is a very simple example, looking at the aortic aneurysm screening, you can see exactly how complex that these can get. And the Vista configuration utility can handle anything as complex as can be created in the roll and scroll. Okay, to conclude I wanted to go through a few more details on the the uh, workings of this uh, graphic interface. Um, we're going to look here at the, uh, the reminder definition for the AAA screening so this here says RT, which means a reminder term, and I wanted to show that if you double click on that, it brings up uh, a variety of levels of detail, and we'll kind of, it goes all the way down to the bottom. We can talk about each one as we go back out. So this is really what makes up the ultimate things. All of these um, terms, uh, health factor, TMG, tobacco, um, or all these different uh, age ranges that, that, um, and that, like whether they've used for 49 to 50 pack years or 30 to 39 pack years and then that all is comprised for into this reminder term finding which is then in turn part of um, this a VA smoking history we included it into that uh, which then is part of this health finding which is of type RT re a reminder type so there you can say you can go through and look now you, you see that it was like four levels deep. That's normally how you have to define it, and we try to make it easier by, by showing that automatically and, and taking that all the way in. Next thing I want to show here is you'll see that there's some that are colored and some that have cross hatches, kind of a silver with a red cross hatch. Those are not. Um, so in this particular uh, thing, if they have had a repair, uh, a CPT code for repair, then that would exclude them. So this is then going to take people out of the uh, the cohort. This other one is uh, for this for a reminder term for screen not applicable. Again, we can double click on that and zoom all the way in, and that is uh, comprised of patients that are terminal cancer patients, or those that are not applicable permanently, or those that are currently are not applicable currently. Okay, um, let's talk also about the age issues. So in this particular case, um, it, it's defined so that you do it none between 0 and 64. You do it every 99 years between age 65 and 75. So since that only occurs once, that's the way of saying do it just once. And then at 76 and above, you don't do it. Uh, again, this is another graphic representation of the records uh, which are here, which can be uh, edited individually. All right, let's see if there's anything on the resolution. So some of these, I think probably, let's look at this one. So there's like a sublogic group. If you click, it'll zoom in. And then here we have a function. So it's this function. And you can click on that function. And that'll come up saying that there's a date difference uh, greater than uh, 60 years.
All right, and um, go back, and then there's some utility items here. So that's all. I was going to show also the grid, each of the normal fields. Um, you can double click into that, and it'll take you into if it's a sub file, and it will take in there's a the visualization or the editing uh, thing, and each one of these can then be posted back to the server. All right, so I don't want to make this too long. Uh, thanks for watching, and please contact us if you have any questions. Thank you very much.